Welcome back, everybody, to your three-man booth heading into NFL Week 14. I'm Dan Salem with Bud and Phil. With your ATS picks, we all went one and one last week, so we're scrounging up some wins. We need a couple 2-0 and weeks here to round out the season. Only a few weeks left. These games get harder and harder to pick. Phil, would you start us off with Week 14? It's an interesting slate of games. <laughs> well, I can guarantee that this one will cover. I know Bud's afraid to pick it, but I'm going to pick it. The Seahawks will beat the crap out of the Jets this weekend and cover the 13 and a half points. The resurgent New York Jets? <laughs> Seattle, yeah. Seattle is going to be pissed off from what happened last week. DK Metcalf is going to have 150 yards receiving by halftime. Chris Carson is going to have 100 yards rushing. They're going to easily win. The, I mean, just got to go to the, the furthest place west you can get. Remind me to talk about the potential of Ty Johnson against that poor Seattle line later. But I agree with uh, We you. will. We will. <laughs> so I'll take the Seahawks minus 13 and a half. I'll lay the wood on that one. And I'll, I'm going to uh, – I'm going to take another favorite, but <clears throat> that Lions secondary is atrocious. Atrocious. Yeah. Devontae Adams is on a, a course that it's, it's incredible. If he, if he played a full season, his numbers would be insane. So give me the Packers over the Lions. I, same thing. Devontae Adams is going to have a monster game against that secondary. Yeah. I'm with I, need you it for my play, I need it for my fantasy playoffs. Oh. So I need Devontae Adams to have a monster game. Wait, you made the playoffs? I made the playoffs. I'm in. Wow. All right. We'll get there. We'll, we'll get there later. <laughs> Let, let's let Bud lay his picks, and then we can talk about your fantasy re- <laughs> rebirth. <laughs> uh, I'm going to take. Uh, I'm going to take Dallas, laying three and a half over Cincinnati. Cincinnati's on a third string quarterback, um, so Dallas is terrible. But with uh, Cincinnati on their third string, I, I don't. I'll, I'll lay the three and a half. And then I will take uh, Houston over Chicago. Chicago's offense is ab- absolutely putrid. Um, Houston has the potential to uh, put up some points. Chicago's defense will hold them into the game, but it's just one point. So I'm, uh, I'll lay the one point and cover. So, so you, don't, you, don't, you weren't feeling that 25-point lead the Bears took last week and then gave up to lose, <laughs> whatever it was. Something no. crazy? <laughs> no, no I, I don't. I don't buy the Bears either. They, what are they on a five or six game losing streak? Something crazy. Something, something like that. Yeah. Those are some solid picks. I, I got two. One favorite. One should be favorite underdog. I'm going to take the Saints. They are minus seven. Uh, I think they're on the road. Um, but New Orleans is probably the best team in the NFC. They're getting Drew Brees back. Maybe. And on the road at Philadelphia. But they're, but they're playing the Eagles, who is going to be starting a rookie quarterback, and they have a terrible defense and no offensive line. I'm only laying a touchdown. Even without Drew Brees, uh, the Saints are going to dominate whatever's left of Philadelphia. And I'm Which isn't gonna, much. No, not much. <laughs> they, they fell apart after leading the NFC East with that three victories. Um, my other game, I'm picking the Cleveland Browns. They are at home versus the Ravens. Baltimore's favored. I don't know why Lamar Jackson I, maybe is at 100%, but that Baltimore defense stinks. The Cleveland Browns have been winning games ugly, and then they just absolutely obliterated their opponent last week and really looks good. They, uh, I think they get – I'm getting two and a half with the Browns. I think the line's down to plus one now. It might be, it might be favoring them by the, by the time kickoff happens, but grab it while you can and get the points with the Browns. Those are your weak – 14 picks. All right. Why don't we get, why don't we get the Jets cock wrapped up? Because <laughs> then, we, then we can move on to something actually interesting. But um, No, no, no. no wait, wait. This is very interesting. Well, so I want to talk about something that surprised me because I never heard of this guy, Ty Johnson, running the football for the Jets. He put up over 100 yards and a touchdown against – I mean, the Raiders aren't great, but – he just came out of nowhere for me. And I know they're starting their rookies. They're starting their young players. Why wasn't he starting over P Ryan earlier in the year? If he's this good, is it just opportunistic? I mean, Seattle's got a bad running defense because the the giants just ran all over them with not Saquon Barkley. So yeah, yep. what's Johnson going to do in round two? And I don't think they're going to win, but I don't know. 
But what are your thoughts? I, I don't know how much you, game you got to watch, but Johnson impressed me. I watched uh, I watched every uh, every snap of this uh, dumpster fire. So the um, I would call it um, shit on toast. Is that, is, that, is that the right right expression? Who cares? <laughs> well, what about the? But listen, I get. <laughs> What about the I get, I get what you're what saying. The I think it was a pleasant surprise that somebody who we never even heard of all of a sudden decided to run for 130 yards, and they had 200 yards on on the ground. Uh, Adams looked great. Um, Johnson looked great. Um, you know, without P. Ryan and Gore and Bell, they had their most productive running game of of the year against a not a great defensive front, but a good defensive front. I think, uh, you know, uh, Vegas, Vegas' defense isn't terrible. Um, but I, I just – Let me rephrase the question. Too, I, think it's too, I think it's too little too late, and I think what, you, what you're seeing is a team that is um, – the, the players who are getting an opportunity to play now are showcasing for next year if they want to be on this team or if they want to be on another team, right? Yeah. So – the other the other people who who don't care um, are are yeah well so playing so I, like they I, don't care. Be- Be- Becton looks excellent when he's um, when he's when he's when staying he's on the field when he's healthy on the field correct and he was blocking for Johnson and maybe it's just the product of whoever he's blocking for is going to run really well but I'm intrigued by Johnson I don't know if he's got potential we'd have to see if he can actually have another good game against a team that's going to let them run the ball because. By all accounts, the weapons they have would be Darnold to um, Mims and well, Mims whatever. might not even be playing this week oh, though. Not, yeah. Okay. Well, but, um, yes. Apparently, he has to go to Texas for a family emergency, and then he has to come back. So when he when he comes back to the facility, he has to clear COVID protocols and he has to fail like two or three tests. Yeah, that's gonna be tough. Um, so right now, Sunday is up in the air for him. Okay, but to your correct to your point, Mays has been playing great, and I think he's in a contract here. So I'm excited at some of the individual performances. I was not expecting them to win. Was not surprised when they gave them the ball back with enough time to lose. And it happened. <laughs> I love the quotes that Greg Williams, if that was his last call in the NFL, that was the way he would have wanted to go out. <laughs> Call it a zero all out blitz on a Hail Mary. Um, I don't have anything else to say on that. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's the dumbest play call I've ever seen in my life. I was, I said to Phil, we just finished the podcast. He said, "Well, what was your reaction for the game?" I said, "I was mixed emotion, right? Like I don't want them to win because if they win, they 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 ruin the the chance of getting the number one pick. Um, but then I found myself wanting them to win, and then yeah. when they lost, it didn't surprise me. I was screaming and yelling at the TV that I I yeah. could not believe. I, I've never in my life seen such a boneheaded play." It's never been called before. Why would you blitz? All you have to do is tackle the guy in bounds. That's it. You know. you could have rushed two guys and put everybody else back. See, well, I think I think that there's been like a hundred hail. Mar- I, I don't know. The NFL gave the stat where no one's ever called that on a hail mary in the entire history of the league for right for reasons because you just do max protect in the secondary so that they don't get in the end zone. I mean, it's it's. Football 101. I've played enough Madden to know that. So <laughs> that's what that's what the Giants did in the last play when, when um, Russell Wilson was throwing the ball up in the air. They had you know nine guys back there. Now that was a good football game. I watched a lot of the Giants eat Seahawks, and I hope that that's a potential playoff precursor because well, it would be if the, if the playoffs ended today. That's exactly what it would be, and that'd be fun. I mean, they were without their two best players, and the Giants still looked good. Uh, their defense has really come together. They they did not completely shut down Seattle, but they slowed down close. to a hole. It was real close. <laughs> Russell Wilson was sacked five times. When's the last, I mean, when's the last time you can I, even was, think about that happening? It was vintage Leonard Williams. That's what I said in the podcast. I, mean, yeah. I couldn't believe how well he's he's been playing this year. Yeah, that that turned out well in the end, at least. So I mean, I said you really. guys laughed. You guys laughed when they when they traded a third round pick for Leonard Williams. I, I thought I always thought he was a good player. I mean, he just stopped caring, and now he. That's probably true. <laughs> and and he is it a coincidence that he's playing well that the team is winning the division because he wasn't playing all that great when they were losing. I, well, I but, but, well, like, but nobody was because I know. 
I, I'm still going with that narrative, and I'll talk about it in Washington too in a second. It, it just it took this long for everything just to come together to buy in to learn the schemes. It's it's just when by all accounts, Judge is running a really good team. I mean, I've seen a lot of comparisons to this is what the Jets should do, like have one guy control both sides of the ball, like actually be the head coach of the team and not give authoritarian control to other coaches. <laughs> well, but did, did you tell, tell Dan what you told me about Gase in the last play of the game there. I don't know if he knows that. Oh, I, I read it. Like, Go oh, ahead. you read it? Yeah. That he wanted to call a timeout? No, no, that he wasn't even paying attention. No, he was, he was distracted with something else, and he didn't have a chance to call a timeout to veto the play <laughs> call. And then before he knew it, it happened, and he was like, what did you have? Yeah, yeah. So I, I asked Bud this question. I said, the, whoever the defensive captain, I don't know who the defensive captain is for the Jets, but he gets the play call in. You, you'd think they look around at each other and be like, are you kidding me? We're really going to run this play? And no one has authority to be like, guys, we're not running that play. That's the stupidest play I've ever heard. Or they all look around and said, yeah, Trevor Lawrence it is. <laughs> uh, no, but no, those guys, those – as I've heard so many times, the players could care less about tanking for draft picks. They want to win on the field. Like they, they want, they're playing. They want to win. Like I know somebody had to have been like, guys, this, we can't do this. Yeah. I mean, you know, though, from playing football that if you have bought into your coach's mentality, then you absolutely want to go all out and sack them on the final play, just like your head. But coach they, there's, you, so you're you, so you think they buy into their coach's mentality there. They don't even know who's calling the plays. I mean, it was an ego move. He's an ego guy. It, I don't know. I just I, – I was questioning whether or not someone smart enough would be like, guys, this, we're not – there's no – way." because, again, I know Darnold can't change the call at the play on the line of scrimmage, but Aaron Rodgers calls his own plays for the last five years. Peyton Manning used to call his own plays too. Like, I know. And, and I think that you need to give your players the ability to make a smarter decision than their coach. But the Jets don't have that. Ah, man, I just, I don't know. It was weird. But so, so go run back to the Giants. You know, me, you, Bud, everyone else, all the analysts, no one picked the Giants to win this game. And, I, and probably for good reason. They were double digit underdogs. Colt McCoy, no Saquon Barkley. I mean, it was just a recipe for disaster, right? But Col- as I said before, Colt McCoy did exactly what he needed to do. He only threw for 105 yards. He was only sacked twice. He had one interception. And that's because, uh, once again, Evan Ingram lets the ball go right through his hands and gets picked off. Yeah. So for a lot of those Daniel Jones turnovers where Evan Ingram's fall, let's call it like we see it. Um, but Wayne Gallman rushed for 135 yards. I mean, that's, that's incredible. They rushed for 190 overall. Yeah, no, I, I, I only took – I watched I watched a good amount of the game, but I only had to watch was a couple series to know that the Giants had a significant chance to win it. I didn't know if they were yeah, going to so, pull it off. But. Right. <laughs> so at the end of the first quarter, it was 3 nothing. I'm like, all right, you know, 3 nothing. Then it was only 5 nothing at halftime, yep. which was lucky, by the way, because they should have recovered that – ball in the end zone on the block punt. But at the, at the same time, I'm like, now there's a, you know, you get to the second half. I'm like, all they need is one score and they can take the lead. And I mean, they ended up scoring two touchdowns to go 14 to five, but I'm like, they, they actually have a chance to win this game. It was incredible. We, I think all three of us have been saying throughout the season that Seattle's defense is not good. So and pass defense has been not good. The run defense was eh, so, so, but it was well, their, it was their pass defense that was letting up points all over the place. They were actually calling, Jamal Adams' number quite a few times in that game, and I think they did a good job. I mean, Colt McCoy can't really throw the ball. But they could not stop the Giants' running game for the life of them. There's no way they can win in the playoffs without being able to stop the run. I mean, I don't know what's up. I don't know what's up with the Seahawks, but. They did a hell of a job on DK Metcalf because, according to his stats, that was a mediocre DK Metcalf game, so. Right, and. It was just, it was a total, it was, a, it, like I said before, it was probably the best win in the last four years, easily. Yeah, for the Giants, I, easily. One, I mean, Seattle is going to make the playoffs. I mean, but they aren't going to find themselves against the Jets because the Jets aren't going to challenge them. So it's interesting. They're not going to be able to fix anything against a team that's really awful. Yeah, but they could also they could also get a little bit of uh, momentum and confidence back by that's you true. know putting together. Um, you know, Russell Wilson has not looked great the past couple weeks. And I just feel like this is this is the perfect get right game. I mean, they're they're upset that they lost to the Giants. The Jets secondary is awful. Um, their run defense is so so. They're the third worst defense in the league. Uh, they've given uh, the fourth most uh, yards uh, in the league. Uh, their offense a, is the, is the worst in the league. I so I mean, a, it's like a negative of hundred and. 
30 or 150 point differential. I've never seen it. I've never seen a, something so yep. astronomical. Uh, but I just, I just feel like, yeah, maybe the Jets will be able to move the ball on them and maybe they'll score some points, but the Jets defense isn't going to be able to, to hold. The Giants defense is much better than the Jets defense. It's, it, yeah. it's that simple. They, they just play more of a um, – Disciplined. They're more disciplined. Yeah, they're oh, yeah. more disciplined. They've gotten better too, which is really something. Remember, remember week one, week two, week three. Everyone's like, "This is going to be the worst defense in history," and that has absolutely not happened. So it's good now, to see, yeah, things progressing. Well, so they're leading the division, but they are still only four and eight. No, five and seven. I'm oh, sorry, five and seven. Um, both the Reds, both both Washington and the Giants are five and seven. Do you think one of them gets to gets to the nine wins that you that we were all hoping for? I think it's an eight and eight finish, right? I nine think it's wins, eight, no eight. chance nine wins. Yeah, I think it's eight and eight. I think eight and eight wins this division. If it's seven and nine, might win this division if both Washington and the Giants go seven and nine because the Giants will own the, the, the tiebreaker. Yeah, but Giants first Cardinals it seems very winnable now, and then they get to the Cowboys. Who's that third game? So it's so they play the Cardinals. They got four. They, got four. they play the Cardinals, the um, the Cardinals, the Ravens, the Browns, which is now Sunday Night Football, by the way, and then then they end end of the year with the Cowboys. So we can all agree they're going to win that game. So there's one win. Yeah, the I mean, Cardinal I'm- game is winnable, right? Because it's because it is it's winnable now. Um, Baltimore doesn't scare me as much as they used to, to be quite honest with you. Um, that Cleveland game is I I don't know because. <laughs> We're so used to losing. It's it's hard to change our minds. Like Cleveland's actually a good team, and they are. Well, they also, but they also have won a lot of games this season, like 10-8, 11 to seven. Well, like, remember, a lot of those games were in like monsoons and awful weather conditions. So yeah, you're right. But they haven't been. It's not like they've been playing in a dome every year. Yeah, every week. I, I guess they they won a lot of super close games. The Giants lost a lot of super close games to start the season. And so I expect them to be in a very close football game. And it, it I, listen, I hope so. That's uh, I hope all these games are competitive. Besides the Dallas game, I hope they beat the crap out of them. But yeah, I expect at least the next three. And then Washington's got to play uh, Pitts. No, they to play Pittsburgh. Um, shoot. Oh, they play the Niners. They play the Niners. They play. I think they play Seattle too. They play Philly, and I can't remember the fourth one. Cincinnati, right? Is that they have Cincinnati left? I mean, they got um, the same teams with the Giants, but. I have to look. I don't remember. But anyway, it's you're right. Seven and uh, nine and seven is not going to happen because that means you have to go four and zero. Oh. That's not happening. Even eight and eight is tough. I, I mean, they have to go three and one. I'd say seven and nine is probably three and one. I mean, aren't they on a four game winning streak? They'd have to have gone seven and one. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> I, just, I mean, it's possible. It is also possible that they could win this division at six and ten. Yeah, that's true too. Absolutely. I mean, again, because it goes back to the tiebreaker. I mean, Washington's schedule, we talked about it in the podcast. Is it's no cupcake. It, it, right. The, the, next four game, the next four games for both the Reds, well, Washington mm-hmm. and the Giants are, are not super, super easy. So, I mean, it's very possible that, you know, you win one of those games. I mean, I think right, it's, pretty safe to say, it's pretty safe to say that they'll probably win against the Eagles and the Giants yeah. will probably win against the Cowboys. So, the, Yeah, well, we said, we said the Giants needed to win one of the NFC games to hold the NFC tiebreaker in principle if they all lost, and they got one, which is huge. Well, all right, so, so Washington plays the Niners, Seattle, Carolina, and then the Eagles. That's what it is. Oh, so they got four NFC games. So that, they must have already played Baltimore. They must have played yeah. them earlier in the season. Yeah, they did. Okay. So, yeah. I haven't watched Washington play. Are you guys buying them? I mean, I don't know how they beat Pittsburgh. but So, I said before, I said this, but I go, I think the Giants and Washington are exactly the same. They started off slow for, what, for whatever reasons you want to call. Washington's on their third quarterback list. <laughs> yeah. um, but it's, everything's starting to come together. Now, I think the injury to Antonio Gibson is going to be hurtful to them. Because I don't think he's playing this week. I could be wrong, but yeah. Alex Smith is what he what we remember him to be. It took him a couple of weeks to get his feet back under him, but yeah. he's no slouch. No, he's I mean he's a good quarterback. He earned that contract he got before that devastating interview. Is it, he was is it he was me? the third quarterback, by the way, in Washington. Third. Yeah. Well Is it just me or is it every time that he gets hit, like I am so scared? Well that- you saw you saw he got cleated, right? Yeah, and his his ankle started to bleed. Like, I 
every time he gets hit, I'm just so afraid like his his leg is just gonna fall apart. Yeah, I, <laughs> I don't know. I I guess I haven't watched enough, but I think you rightfully are nervous. It will, <laughs> I don't think they'll make the playoffs, but if they do. <laughs> you don't get you don't get a lot of Washington games out there in LA. Well, I I couldn't give up my Sunday ticket subscription because I'm a glutton for a Jets punishment. So I can technically watch them. Right. But I chose to watch the Giants game instead. <laughs> and then I skipped, skipped the – I guess that was a Monday game, Pittsburgh-Washington. I skipped that one. But. Yeah, that was a shame too because I really wanted Pittsburgh to win that game. And they probably should have for all time. They made a lot of stupid plays. and uh. Well, we all knew they weren't going to go undefeated. So it was just somebody who was going to beat them. Um, Any other team they have <laughs> But they haven't played well the last three weeks. I mean, we talked about yeah. this last week. They they have not looked like the same team that they, they were in the beginning of the year. And and if you continue to make mistakes like they did, they had 11 drop passes. They have no running game. Their defense is, is good, but they, their offense relies too much on Ben. It, they're they're not going to they're not gonna be able to keep the consistency up. They're just not going to be able to do it. Well, let me ask you. They can't do anything about it, but technically they didn't have a bye week. And they, their games have gotten jockeyed around so much these last few weeks. Do you think that's taken a toll on the team mentally? Yeah. yeah. Well, they only, had five, they only had five days of rest, and Washington had 11 days of rest. So I'm sure that, that had something to do with it, too. Um, but drops are inexcusable. I mean, like, if it hits you in the hands, you should be able to catch the football. You guys are NFL, NFL players. I mean, if, if those drop passes didn't happen, say you, say you only dropped half of them, uh, Pittsburgh wins this football game. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I want to talk about the Browns for a second because they're in the division with Pittsburgh. I mean, they're not, I don't think they'll catch them, but uh, they could, I, they, they could. I, I mean, I've been impressed with Cleveland. They're coming on late. They, they were strong last week and that's what you need. You need to be strong this time of the year, not September. Um, I'm buying Cleveland all the way. I think Baltimore misses the playoffs. I think that new England misses the playoffs. I am not buying the ugly football that they keep winning with. What do you guys thought? Oh, they won week? forty-five nothing last weekend. <laughs> <laughs> the, the Chargers game aside, <laughs> I don't know what happened there. That was like an aberration. I lost my fantasy week by three points. Justin Herbert had the worst game of his career, and that was why I lost. You know why? Because he played the well, listen. And I also had, I also had Wentz who got benched in the first quarter, so that was my other. You played Wentz. I had, well, he'd been putting up fifteen to twenty points. It was better than nothing. Oh, Bill, and I regret Bill. it. <laughs> so I didn't watch that Chargers game. Do you know what happened? What what the heck? I don't know. Well, yeah, they, played, they, played the pa- they played the Patriots, and Bill Belichick had a great defensive scheme against them, and that's yeah. You know, they guess they have a bad all, they have a bad defense in in LA there. Uh, but I'm not buying the Patriots. They're six and six. I am not buying them one bit. I just can't. Okay, let's let let's let's just discuss the Patriots really quickly. Their last – oh, wow, their, their last – okay. We get the Jets once, right? So they're, they're six and six right now. Yes. Okay. You got to think in order for them to get into that last playoff spot, they got to get to nine. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Okay. So they got to play the Rams, the Dolphins, Buffalo, and the Jets. So they finished division, 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 which is, wow. is crazy. Now, Buffalo looks every bit the best team in the division. I'm not sold on Miami. I'm not sold on Tua. Tua, I, no. I don't know what it is about him. He just doesn't – he doesn't strike me as as the threat. They're going to have so a they got to they they win three. They got to win three. They got to win three of their next four games. They're easily going to beat the Jets. Right. Um, think. They'll pro- they could they could beat Miami. I mean, is there any way eight and eight gets them that last wild, extra wild card spot? Because I don't think that they can go three and one. Well, like, right now, in two, two, but so one, two, three, four, five, six. So Indy's in the seven spot, and they're eight and four right now. So you have to get at least cool. eight. Indy's not going to lose four in a row. No, that's very unlikely. The problem is they have to jump Baltimore, Vegas, and Indianapolis right now. Yeah, well, and, and Miami's sitting there, and they'll play Miami. And Miami's pretty much – I mean, they haven't secured anything. but Right. Only Actually, only Kansas City has an X next to their name right now. <laughs> yeah. 
Kansas City and New Orleans, I think. He's, 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 yeah, they're the only two, right? Why doesn't but Pittsburgh even, get the even X? Pittsburgh, even Pittsburgh at eleven and one doesn't have a secu- yeah. has an X right now. Why, which why is, is that? I don't know. Sure. That makes no sense to me. Is there eight teams this year or seven teams in the playoffs? Seven, right? Seven. Seven. All right, so they're yeah they're yeah, they added one extra wild card. Yeah, you're right. I mean, Indianapolis is eight and four. They probably get to play Jacksonville again too. So. Yeah, I mean, it, it would, it would, it would come, it would be close. Yeah, they do. They, they get to play Jacksonville week seventeen, so no chance that's going to happen. They're going to lose again. They have to avenge that week one loss. <laughs> I know. Don't even say it. We know. Well, we know. So I got an update about our survivor pool that I was part of, not the one that we did as a three man booth. There are still two people left. Can you believe wow. it? They are still going strong. And I was thrilled. I've never seen the Jets picked more often on a, on, a, on a score sheet. They've picked against the Jets so many times. It's funny. <laughs> I would have too if I could have. But that's the problem is, is, is you can't win it that way. You're, if, if both of those guys keep picking against the Jets, you're, you're going to split. Yeah. Well, they, they both picked the same team last week. They both can, got it right. But, yeah, it's funny. I bet, you that's, I bet you Seattle knocked a lot of people out, huh? I, I don't know. I mean, there was only two left for, there's only been two left for a month and a half. So oh, wow. <laughs> it was, there was, well, there's like, all the problem is there's a lot of bad teams right now. So it's easy to pick, you know, you bet against Cincinnati, the Jets, the Cowboys, you know, there's a lot of bad teams. Yeah. So I, I'm not familiar with next year's draft beyond Trevor Lawrence, but you think anybody else is going to start tanking for higher picks? I don't know what other players are sitting out there. We haven't got much college football. To, to watch. Well, the first, the first two picks in the draft next year are going to be quarterbacks. You're going to get, you're going to get Trevor Lawrence one, and then you're going to get Fields from Ohio State as two. Right. And every, and then everything else is going to be like offensive linemen, defensive ends. You know, pretty typical yeah. stuff. I don't know how deep the quarterback, the, the quarterback. Uh, but the reality is that the first two picks of the draft are going to probably go quarterback. No. I mean, the Jets have a very interesting scenario on their hands. I mean, do they think that Sam is just wasted goods, or do they think if they bring in a new coach with a new philosophy and more talented weapons, the kid's only 23 years old, right? Yeah. So it's it's not it's not like he's he, he's old. I mean, he's no. he's 23. I mean, he he can still you, be the well, the franchise quarterback you need yeah. him to be. But do you pass up on Trevor Lawrence? I don't think you do. I don't think you can. It, if they pass up on Trevor Lawrence. The, the team the team would be killed no Dude, is he consensus better than the guy kid from ohio state like hands yeah. down yeah yeah the, the, what i read today is that the, that he is the best quarterback prospect since andrew luck yeah then they gotta pick him now do you believe the bill cower news or is that just smoke i i don't want anything to do with bill cower stay 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 home stay stay on cbs have fun yeah yeah i don't know who will coach the jets but uh, lawrence will be exciting um I'm just thinking the Cowboys, like, what do they got to play for? But they could get a top five pick if they lose a lot more. They probably will anyways, but. Uh, well, they're going to they're gonna need defensive help. I mean, they could use a cornerback. They could use. Uh, that's assuming they should have throw all that money at Dak Prescott. Uh, well, they're going to have to franchise him. And then that's 30, that's 32 or 33 million uh, guaranteed. So. Yeah. Well, they, they're paying Zeke. Who, <laughs> you got to get him an offensive liner. He's definitely not worth the money. <laughs> Um, and Amari Cooper, they're paying him a ton of money too. And Amari Cooper is like a ghost out there. He's he, some some days he's there, some days he's not. So they they need more picks than anything now that the Patriots notoriously have like a bevy of draft picks. You see them trading up into the top ten to grab one of those two quarterbacks, and nah, that's not their move normally. But oh, but the, you would, they would need it's not their move. But I mean. You would need to offer the Jets or Jacksonville a lot because Jacksonville is clearly tanking now. I mean, they could go back to Minshew, who's a better quarterback than Glennon, and they don't even want to do that anymore. No. So, they, I mean, you can't tell me that they're they're tank they're not tanking. They're they're completely tanking. They don't want Gardner Minshew coming in and, and stealing a game or two. No, well, I thought they were going to win last week, but then they didn't. So, I agree with you. Uh, I'm trying to think who else is tanking. I mean, Cincinnati might as well tank now. I don't know when Burrow comes. Well, since back. he's not taken, they just don't have any healthy bodies left. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Uh, any other final thoughts for week 14? That's all I got. No, let's let's keep this winning streak going. Yeah, go Giants. I'm a Giants fan now. But yeah, no, <laughs> <laughs> your care package is in the mail. All right.